It is an honor to be with you today and pray that everything that we have done and will continue to do this morning will be a blessing to you. We take our message today, I have seen the Lord from the book of John as we mentioned earlier. Of course on this most glorious day we can begin with many old statements, cliches, song titles, song words. He is risen! The stone's been rolled away. It is finished! The battle is over. Jesus is Lord. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. All of these are appropriate to say today. They're appropriate to say any day, right? And they're, and they're appropriate to say with great joy. Because it is on this day and this day of rejoicing that we've got something to shout about, right? We've got something to get excited about because of what God has done for us the love and the joy and the, the, just the enormity of all of the things that is, that is shown to us. But yet we, we turn to this passage today and we begin by reading that Mary is crying. Mary is weeping, if you will, outside of the tomb. We read that she sees the angel sitting where Jesus' body had been. Now that's important. Because that's past tense. He's not there anymore, right? She's peeked in and he's gone. That's not there. So she's weeping at this sight. Think about this for a minute. This should have been a grand moment of joy. Because what did Jesus say? On the third day, I will rise. But they asked her, the angel said, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Because they were, they were again, Asking in great sincerity because he's not here. Just like he said, right? He's not here. He has risen. But yet still she's weeping and she says, because they've taken away my Lord. I, I don't even know where they put him. Tears on a day of triumph. What, is, what has happened? What has taken place? She's become blinded by emotions. We do that all the time. We do that all the time. We get caught up in the emotional weight of a situation and we can't see the good. We can't hear the good. We can't feel the good. We spoke earlier this morning as we gathered together that they had, they had gone and, and, and they went fully expecting to find the body still there. That was, that was a full expectation. They had the anointing oils and the spices and all that. They fully expected that. But when they got there, Jesus was gone. But he said that he wouldn't be there. He had already told everybody that he wouldn't be there. But here, what we find is that no one paid that any attention. No one remembered that conversation. Once again, we find emotions at the core of that. Because Jesus said, I must go. It has to happen. I must be handed over. I will be killed. But on the third day, I will rise. See, that's the most important part of the lesson. That's the most important words of the entirety of his speech. But because emotions were present, once again, it shut down all the senses. I only hear the bad parts. How often do we still do that? We hear all the negative things and the what ifs and the how to's and the buts and the what for's, but we don't hear the, the conclusion, the finality of something that'll be wonderful of that, right? We don't hear that. And so here we see this absolutely happening. We begin to shut down. If, if we begin our day with somewhat kind of a negative attitude or someone under a cloud, in other words, we begin our day expecting the worst, what do we often find? The worst. Because that's what we were already looking for, right? We were already headed in that direction. We'd already made our mind up. I mean, we've, we've heard people utter these words. Maybe we've even said to them, oh, it's going to be a terrible day. And at the end of the day, it was a terrible day. Well, you're already looking for it, right? You were already in the mindset to receive that terrible day. But here what we find is Mary, she's journeyed toward the tomb. And she fully expected the worst she expected that Jesus would still be there, that, that death would still be there, and, or, or even, even worse, if that were possible, that the vile people who put him there would have done something with his body. 
So she's got her mind made up as she's approaching the door, as she's approaching the tomb and the stone, that she was going to find the worst. She was already in that mindset. She got there, and he's gone. And she falls apart. In other words, that was the moment of, I knew it. I just knew it. I knew it was going to go wrong. I knew it was going to be bad. Have we ever done that? You know, we've, we've already got that mindset there. We're already in that place. I just knew it wasn't going to work out. And what has happened? All the worry and all the doubt and all the sadness and all of this, it caused a feeling of being completely defeated. Comp oh, and she's standing outside of the tomb weeping. This defeat has overtaken us. Again, never stopping to remember the promise from Jesus that on the third day, I will rise. You see, life, and I know we all know this, but life can be a real struggle sometimes, right? It can be, it can be a real, real challenge. We can all agree with that. And certainly that's not a secret or a revelation, but what we see through Mary's tears is something that we fight as well. And this was powerful. And if you're a note taker, I, I mean, just, just write this down. Believing in Jesus, but doubting in his power. We believe in Jesus, but we so often doubt his power. They believed, and as we will see, as she says, you've taken my who? My Lord. They believed in Jesus, but they didn't believe in his power. How often do we sell ourselves short on that very same problem? Oh, yeah, I can do all things through Christ, but there's no but in that verse. You know, everything can happen. God's, in, you know, God's got it, but there's no but. But we keep adding that in there. And here, I believe you're the one. I mean, Peter said, you're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. And all these different proclamations that have been made. But here we find Mary and the others who have heard these very things on the third day. And now we find them weeping, weeping on this day of triumph. She's still calling him Lord. She said, they've taken away my Lord. But what did Jesus say? On the third day, I will rise. That was an affirmation. That was an absolute conclusion that it was going to happen. But her tears doubted that promise. Her tears didn't allow her to see beyond the emotions of the moment. And we do that. We, 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 become, we become part of that sometimes. Her tears doubted his power. See, she saw, she saw the brutality of the death. I mean, the, 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 just the enormous punishment that his body took. The, 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 the harshness of the moment, the cruelness of the soldiers that perpetrated it, the wickedness of the government that put that through, all the different, she saw it all, witnessed it all. I mean, the, the removal of his lifeless body after he gave up, as Scripture says, his spirit taken down from the cross, placed in a tomb, wrapped in burial clothes. I mean, yeah, I mean, I know, I know who he was, but, but, we do that. He, I saw him put him there. But you didn't hear what he said. Sometimes today, we, we become overwhelmed by the impossible because somebody's told us it couldn't be. Or we've heard from some higher authority that something couldn't be. But we need to be challenged back to what did God say? God said, I can do all things. Even, even with Mary at the birth of Christ, the angel said, with man... It is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible. How big is the word nothing? It's pretty enormous, right? It encompasses everything. And so we see this power here. And but Mary, in her doubt, in this moment, her doubt, it, her doubt, it doubted his presence. Think about this for a minute. She's not only overwhelmed by the emotions of the moment, but now we see, she said, because they've taken away my Lord, and I, I don't know where he is. And so she's distraught. She's defeated. I mean, how, how much worse could it get? And she's not able to see anything at all, including the very one she came to see. We turn to the next verse, and it says in verse 14, having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. 
Think about how that reads. She, she turned around and saw him there, but did not know it was him. Her tears blinded her to the truth. You see, he indeed was not just Lord, but he remained Lord, and she missed it. She missed it there in just in that moment because what we need to understand, friends, is he was not just Lord in past tense. He is Lord. He is then. He is now because why? He's alive. He has risen. Her tears should have been tears of joy. But the defeat of her vision, it, and her, it, 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 it killed her vision. It killed her ability and blinded her to be able to see the most powerful moment of her life. She's standing before the Lord. She's witnessing the resurrection. She's seeing all the things that are there. So you say, well, Pastor, how, how does, what is this? Where are we going here? How does this relate to us? What power does worry have over us? What, do, what, is, what is a common statement, common cliche in the Western culture? I'm worried, what? To death. How many of us realize that's not a good thing? <laughs> that's, a, that's not a good ending to that worry, right? And, and that's, but we do that all the time. We get consumed by that. And what happens in the moment of that worry? We can't see beyond it. We can't, it begins to consume us. It begins to consume our thoughts, our visions. We can't see beyond it. And it has a great power over us. Even when we worry about stuff that doesn't even happen. Have we done that? See, Mary, Mary's on the way to the grave, and oh, it's going to be terrible, and they're going to have done this, and he's still going to be. And she's wound herself up in all of this and gets there. He's not there, just like he said. And he's standing in front of her, and she can't even see him. The answer's right there, and she cannot see it because she can't see beyond herself. We do that. We do that all the time. And so we look here, and, and, and we've said that. We've said that at the end of a day or an end of a situation sometime. I've worried about something for nothing. It didn't even happen. Or it didn't go the way that I thought it was to. See, fear takes over. And when fear takes over, faith goes right out the door. Because then we begin to get, we get, we get overwhelmed, we get encompassed by all this because we can't think beyond it. Because we, again, we're scared to death, we're worried to death. I mean, we're all, all these different negative things, right, that are pointing us in directions that don't take us anywhere good. And so we're, we're seeing here, she's in the presence of God himself. She's standing before the very one she went to see, and she can't even see him because she can't see beyond her own tears. She can't see, see beyond her own doubts and fears. We, we turned and looked, and Mary was worried on the way to the tomb. She convinced herself of what would be, but she never considered the promise of Jesus because she was defeated before she ever got there. We do that. Because sometimes we talk ourselves out of stuff. I've talked myself out of more things than anybody else. Because I've convinced myself you can't do this or you can't do that or whatever. I, I mean, I, I ran two years from ministry when God, I knew God had called. I knew that. But I completely convinced myself, and with the assistance of a few other people, I was completely unqualified, not capable, not able. You know, and, and you just and you keep running, and you keep running, and you keep not listening, and that, because you allow it to defeat you, you allow it, and so we see here, we forget the promise of Jesus. He said, "I'll be back." He said, "I'm coming back on the third day." We forget the promise of Jesus today. He said, "I'll be back." Okay, that's not, that's not, again, that's not to get into gloom and doom. That's not to get into prophecy, and it's not to get into date setting because none of that stuff, is, you can't. But if he said that he would, we can believe that, right? You know, whether it's today, tomorrow, or 40 years from that, doesn't matter. It's, it's not about the time. It's about just having your heart ready. It's about being prepared. And so as she's going to the grave to prepare him, she actually should have prepared her. Okay, because it's about having your heart right to meet Jesus, right? And so if we're here today and we don't have that done, we've not gotten our heart right to meet him, today's the day because he is risen, right? And we understand the beauty of this moment. So we, we understand, too, she'd forgotten his promise because he had done something pretty awesome for her, too. We go back to Mark chapter 16, and it says, Mary, Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven and delivered her from seven demons. Okay, so Jesus had saved her. 
She knew his power. She was set free by his power. So understanding that, grasping that, here's the mindset. She'd seen his power. She knew what he could do. She'd seen the miracles. She'd seen all this stuff. And death defeated him? This group of, 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 of radicals who demanded their way, they took him out? Did she really forget that he is Lord? Did she forget that her Savior is able? No, friends. It's the power of doubt. It's the power of worry and fear. And when they all combine, it is a recipe for disaster. And we all fall victim to it. Because we, we, are, we are in a world that is driven by fear. We're in a world that is driven by doubt. Don't believe anything. Be skeptical and stay hidden and all this. But, but God has given us the truth. And he's given us the ability to see through all of these things because we have the ability to see through the eyes and the lens of Christ. And that should change everything that we see. We should be able to stand in there and see him standing before us. We should hear him calling our name. We should get excited about what it is that he's doing for us. She's looking at Jesus literally and can't see him. How often do we do the same thing when we're looking for an answer? And most of the time... It's everywhere but the right place. Everywhere but the right place. We can't see him because of the tears. We can't see him because of the defeat. Life has beat me up. Everything's, everything's bad. Everything's this. Everything's that. And we get, and we get locked into that. And it's a, it becomes a cycle. And we begin to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And it's just like the old sayings used to be. If you tell a lie long enough, what happens? You start to believe it. I'm no good. I'm this, I'm that, you know, and it never is going to happen. Nothing good is going to and, and we fall into that. And we can't see the answer is standing right in front of us all the time. He's right there. And, this, and, and the story just continues to unfold, and it just gets more and more powerful and more beautiful. He's saying here, I see your tears. But let me help you dry those tears today. Let me help you dry those tears today. Let me help you see clearly now. You know, what's the old Johnny and Ash song? I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. That's what Jesus is saying to us today. He told Mary, he said, why are you crying? Now, she just still don't know who he is, right? He says, why are you crying? Who, who is it that you're looking for? Who is it that you are seeking? And she's so undone, she thinks she's... Taking, talking to the caretaker or the graveside guy or the gardener or something. She don't even know who she's talking to. She's so out of it at this moment. And she said, sir, if, if, if you've carried him away. Now, she was never specific as to who him was. But she, Jesus, this is what's beautiful. She's so out of sorts in the way she's talking and the way she's saying there. But Jesus knew her heart. How many of us today do God knows our heart? He knew who she was looking for. He knows what we're looking for. But will we just listen? Will we just listen to his call? He said, tell me, or she said, tell me where you put him, and I'll, I'll take care of him. I'll, I'll take him away. I just, I don't want anything to happen to his body. You know, I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to be desecrated. I don't want anything to happen here. And Jesus said, Mary, he called her by name. He called her by name. Because his sheep, they know his voice. We can hear that today, friend. He said, Mary. As if to say, hey, it's me. It's me. Wait, wake up. Wake up. Open your eyes. I'm right here. That's what God is telling us today. As we celebrate, as we come together on this momentous occasion. Again, and, and, and understand, while, while we have this as an annual event you know, we celebrate a calendar event and whatever the case. This is an everyday celebration in the life of a believer. Amen? And for all of you that are visiting for the very, very first time today, you don't have to wait till next year to come back. Amen? You, you, I promise we're open every Sunday. Every 52 a year. We're, we're here. We're, we'd love to, love, 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 love to have you. But here, Jesus is speaking to her. In other words, he's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. And then she, at that moment, realized 
he's alive. How do we, how do we get that? Because look at, look at what it says. Because Jesus said to her, Mary, in the very next part of this verse is turning around. Okay, so what was happening there? She was walking away. She was walking away. Defeat, defeat makes us want to leave. Defeat makes us want to walk away and leave the field and not play anymore. Why? Because that's what the enemy wants. As long as we're not on the field, we cannot possibly win the game. Okay? He wants life to cease because life is a gift from God. Jesus said, I came to give you life and it more abundantly. In the very same verse, John 10, 10, he says, the enemy comes to steal it. He comes to kill it, take it away. And so we understand that Mary, Mary in her defeat, she's talking to what she presumes to be the gardener, the, the grave caper or whatever, and says, you know, she's walking away. And he says, Mary. Can we picture this in the theater of our mind? She turns around with her eyes wide open and like, oh my word, there you are. You've been there all along. He's always there all along. If we'll just call out to him, if we'll just hear his voice. And so she turned around. But the, she, this is such a powerful moment. And it's just like us. We see it all the time, and, and, and she's ready to walk away. But the truth, the fact that he's alive, friends, it gives us hope for tomorrow. You know, we can sing the song, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You know, because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Yeah, I mean, we can sing that, but to live it. See, friends, it's so easy to be here this morning and, and gather in fellowship and amen and all the great things. And I love this. And it is so good to see everybody here this morning. This has been such a beautiful day. But tomorrow's Monday. Here's the question. Will you have this same spirit with you tomorrow? Can we say amen tomorrow? Can, 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 we, can we know that if we know him tomorrow, Tuesday will be okay too? You know, I mean, the old, the old blues song, you know, we call it Stormy Monday and Tuesday's just as bad, right? But, but, but here's, here's the truth. It might be, but he'll still be there with you. He'll still hold your hand. He'll still walk you through the fire. We got to believe that, though. We can't go to the grave believing he's still there because he's not. We can't believe that we've been defeated because we're not. We have to hold on to this truth that he has given us, this hope for another day. God says, I've got a future for you, a hope for you. That's what I've got for you. But will we embrace that? That's another gift from God. Obviously, attempting, she must have attempted, wanted to run and grab him because he's called her by name. And as she realizes, he's standing there. He's the answer. He's alive. She wants to grab him, hug him, cling to him. She's overjoyed. She's excited. She's relieved. But he tells her, don't do that. Don't cling to me. That way he wasn't being rude. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to kill her joy right that moment. There was something else. There was a bigger message here. Why did he say that to her? Because now she's got a mission. She's got something to do. He's not just here. See, this is what we need to understand today, friends, on this beautiful day that we gather together. He's not just here for a minute. He's telling her, if you're mine, I'm with you forever. So you don't have to stand and hold on to me as if I'm not going to be here. Uh, you don't have to stand and hold on to me as if I'm going to somehow escape or get away. I will be with you for always, right? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I don't need you to stand here and hold on. I need you to go get busy. That's the message to the church today. We're watching a lost and dying world all around us. You know, we're, we're seeing our nation fall apart, friends. And I don't say that out of panic or anything to do with politics. We see it crumbling right before our very eyes. What is the answer? It was then and it was now. Jesus. That's the answer, period. And this is his message to Mary. Go tell. Go let everybody know this has happened. Go let everybody know I'm back in town. Everything is getting ready to happen. He says, don't cling to me. You've got a mission. You've got something to do. I'm with you forever. Go. Go tell my brothers. Go let them know what has happened. Go now. This news is so important. It cannot wait. Again, we see the, see the chaos. We see the brokenness of our world. Here's the question for us, friends. Do we, do we sense an urgency of this message to go and tell? Because Jesus is still the answer. Jesus is still the answer. You know, we're seeing... Uh, proclamations from the highest office in our land that declares today something other than what it is. 
And again, we're not going to go down that rabbit trail and start getting into all that stuff. But friends, not only, not only can we just outright say that's blasphemy, because it is, but what is the greatest tool of the enemy? Distraction. I want to keep your eyes off the prize. I want to keep you away from the end zone. I do not want you to score the winning touchdown. I'm going to keep you on the bench as long as possible, or I'm going to kneecap you or anything I can to stop you from getting there. I don't care if we've got to crawl. I don't care if we've got to walk or roll. or what. It, friends, we've got to keep going. And the way we do that is we stay together. We keep working together. We strengthen each other. We build each other up. There is a sense of urgency in the air today. Discouragement, defeatedness, sorrow, tears, depression. None of these things add to life. Not one of them. They only steal. They rob us of the ability to be able to see the truth, to be able to see the answer, even when it's right in front of us. And that's just fact. That's not to in any way uh, you know, denigrate, put down anybody that struggles with these things because we all have our moments, because they are real, and we can't deny that. But when something is real, that also means that something has a solution, right? And a problem has a solution, every single one. And the solution, the answer is Jesus Christ, period. He is the answer to all things because with him, all things are possible. We read that Mary... It says that she went and she announced, and I love this, and this is the title of the message, I have seen the Lord. Think about that. Can we we imagine the joy and the exuberance in her face, in her voice that she felt on that day? I have seen the Lord. And it wasn't just the words. I can assure you this. Her face told everyone that it was true. He's alive again. The stone's been rolled away. Yeah, I mean, we, we can just see it. We can sense it in that moment. He's no longer in the grave. Mary began this story weeping, but now she's serving. She, she went from defeat to victory. She went from blinded by emotions to being overwhelmed with the truth. As we celebrate today, what this moment really means What this moment means to every believer that is in this room today, every believer that will hear this message today, may we let him dry our tears. May we let him help us to see he is standing before us. May we let him help us to see he's alive. And he's calling all of us, friends, all of us to serve. He is calling all of us to go and tell others. He is calling all of us to go and share the good news. As we look to the days ahead, may we remember we serve a risen Savior. May we remember that this risen Savior indeed rose on the third day, just as he said. He is the one who kept his promise to return then. He's the one that will keep his promise to return next time. Friends, we are on a mission. May we go forth in the joy of the Lord. May we go forth and allow others to see he was, he is, and he always will be the answer to everything we face in this life. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. May we gather together.